I will say this. Uh, I think one valuable thing we can do is to move beyond the um, really stark fake news examples. I agree with the very distinguished panel we just heard that that isn't going to be our real problem. That's it's addressable. When you know false rumors about a child sex ring at a pizza parlor outside Washington that cause a man to drive six hours from Salisbury, North Carolina, and fire off an AR-15 in the pizza shop, which is what happened last month. Uh, that is a huge problem, but I think it's being addressed, um, as you've heard, on multiple fronts. The bigger problems are the ones that have been alluded to, certainly in Jim's excellent keynote, which is a credibility crisis uh, where major institutions, um, their credibility is being questioned, where uh, you know, essentially defamatory statements are being made about mainstream journalistic organizations that have served this country uh, for a very long time, and where everything is being put up uh, for grabs in a way that affects not just journalists, but marketers and everybody in the media ecosystem. So what we're going to do is just go around, get some comments. JP Mo is at uh, Twitter. Twitter has obviously been at the center of a lot of this controversy because we now have a tweeter in chief. Um, and uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on what Twitter's role might be uh, in addressing the issues we've been discussing. So um, at Twitter, we, we define Twitter as the best way to stay informed about the world. And um, so for us, Twitter is what's happening. Um, obviously, what's happening in the world can include uh, fake news. Um, but the way we look at our mission is, is not to take sides, it's, it's just to show sides. And we have a deep commitment to surfacing uh, any opinions happening in the world, obviously in line with the, the First Amendment. Um, what's unique about Twitter, though, because the platform is public, uh, fake news has been less of, a, of an issue, I would say, because very quickly journalists and people with uh, moral authority and access to the real facts are able to identify tweets uh, emerging from sources with fake news and basically rebuff uh, those, uh, those news, those fake news, and, and correct, uh, correct the information. Um, uh, at the same time, um, we strongly believe that uh, this is a, an issue that we need to look at. Uh, Jack, our CEO, is, is very aware of the issue, uh, focused on it. Um, um, but it's the, the public nature of the platform makes actually a, a fake news, uh, going back to what you were saying, kind of the velocity of the news. Uh, I think there's an increased velocity on Twitter to, to, to debunk those news because the platform is public. You know, one of the things that I called out in the opening, and I'm uh, glad to have you up here leading this session, Andrew, following having the Washington Post up and some, uh, you know, discussion from the Times, it's, you know, there's also the connection that we need to have from a business standpoint with the editorial side. And, and so, you know, um, one of the things I'd like to add, have Randall add to the board is, you know, what are the action steps that we can take as the business side to promote the content creation side, promote the power of professional journalism? And, um, you know, I think th this is a great first step at this meeting by having the editorial side well represented, but I'd like to take that up and say, hey, how do we continue on uh, with this type of dialogue and type of discussion? And I, I do believe that you know, there's, a, there's the power of connection with consumers, there's also the power of connection with content, and, and then connecting that great content with the business side.